Today, I have a confession, and I wonder if you've ever done this too. Picture this. You're out at a cool restaurant, and by cool, I mean loud. <laughs> Your friend says something, and you don't quite catch it. So you ask them to repeat it, and then again, but never a third time, because by then your mind is scrambling. Was that a question? Should I laugh? Should I smile? So you go with the universal backup plan, the smile and nod, <laughs> and you just hope it wasn't a question. You know it, right? It's the thing we do when we hear part of a sentence, but not enough to truly respond. And it happens to all of us in a noisy place. But for someone with hearing loss, the smile and nod, it isn't just a funny moment. It's a survival tactic. And it's masking something far more serious, something most people never realize. When sound stops reaching the ear, the brain starts changing. This is the ear-brain connection. And once you understand it, you will never think about hearing loss the same way again. I've spent over 20,000 hours helping patients hear better in my audiology clinic. I can't tell you how many times someone has described this exact situation. Leaning on the smile and nod, pretending to follow along, but then their eyes well up, and I mean they really well up with tears, because they know that that cool restaurant where the food might be amazing, it's gonna leave them exhausted at the end of the night. Not just emotionally, but physically. There's a term for this in my field, listening effort. It's the sheer mental energy required to fill in the blanks when words aren't clear. And when it happens over and over, it truly is exhausting. It can slowly shape a person's entire life, sometimes without them even realizing it. They stop going to restaurants, then group gatherings, then religious services. They stop speaking up because they're afraid they'll say the wrong thing. And suddenly, without ever having made a conscious decision, they have shrunk their world. What's interesting is that so many people with hearing loss actually don't know it. They blame that noisy restaurant, mumbly family, a spouse talking from the next room. It's relatable, right? But there's so much more to the story. One in three people, 65 to 74, have a treatable hearing loss. Do you know anybody over 75? By 75, it's every other person. But they don't know. And why is that? It's because hearing loss, especially high frequency hearing loss, which is the most common type that I see in my office, it doesn't show up the way that you would expect. One on one, they're perfectly fine. But throw in some background noise, a fast talker, somebody turning in the middle of a sentence, and suddenly they have lost the storyline. And it's not that they don't hear, it's that sometimes, they don't understand. And those sometimes moments, they're not small. They're early signs that the brain is straining to keep up. So this is the part where I need you to all lean in because this is the part that most people never connect to hearing loss. There are three critical health impacts of hearing loss you need to know. There's increased dementia risk. A 2025 study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that 32% of dementia cases could be attributed to untreated hearing loss. 32%. Brain atrophy. MRI scans of the brains of people with untreated hearing loss, it actually shows a shrinkage in the auditory cortex and areas related to memory and to speech. And then there's also loneliness and depression. People with hearing loss are 57% more likely to experience deep feelings of loneliness. And loneliness doesn't just feel bad, 
it shortens life expectancy. It actually decreases the immune system and it increases inflammation. Think of your brain like a muscle. Stop using it and it weakens. So that's a bunch of tough news. So let me give you some good news. A recent study published in the Lancet Healthy Longevity found that hearing aid use cut the risk of cognitive impairment in half for people with high dementia risk scores. In half. If that were a pill, we would all be taking it. It's not a pill. It's a treatment. It's a prescription that doesn't come from a pharmacy. It comes from an audiologist or a hearing instrument specialist. So let me tell you a story. I had a friend who shared with me that her grandmother was experiencing maybe early signs of dementia. She just seemed a little confused, a little distant. I recommended a hearing test, and she was able to reluctantly drag her grandmother in for the test. And guess what we found? It was a high frequency hearing loss. I was able to fit her with hearing aids on the spot. She lit up. She was quick, witty, she smiled, she cried. I cried. <laughs> I, I cry a lot at work. <laughs> she had not realized how hard she had been holding on and working just to keep up. Here's what haunts me about that situation. Her physician didn't recommend that hearing test. Her granddaughter did. What if her granddaughter had just waited for her grandmother to identify the problem and get help? So here's my big ask. I want you to think of someone in your life, someone who says, what, more than they used to, someone who smiles but doesn't seem to quite be part of the conversation. They don't need a lecture. They need an advocate. Someone who says, I see this and I care. Because if we don't talk about the ear-brain connection, if we don't spread this message, we're missing one of the most urgent health crises of our time. It's not just about sound. This is about protecting brains. This is preventative care. Let's not let hearing loss steal another moment from the people that we love. Thank you.